Hey everybody, welcome to the PowerCast Live every Tuesday night. Eric Vasquez and David Lamal live with you Tuesday night, sometime after 5 o'clock. Thank you so much for joining us here today. We are very excited to show with you guys a great show tonight. Something that is going to be exciting, informational, and so much more. And fun. And fun. And fun. Definitely fun. All right, TikTok Nation, thank you for joining us. Instagram Nation, thank you for joining us. And of course, Facebook, over 5,000 followers on a daily basis. It's unbelievable what you guys are doing on social media for us. We love the fact that we have about 20,000 people live watching us all over the country and all over the world. We want you to know that we're here for you. We're excited to be a part of your lives every Tuesday night. And don't forget to watch us on the replay. So if you don't know and haven't remembered already, we are in many social media aspects of social media. Go to YouTube, hit Team Powerhouse Real Estate, type it in, hit subscribe. Go to Instagram, bam. Go to TikTok, go to Facebook, go to IMDB. IMDB. LinkedIn, Snapchat, Live. Twitch. Twitch. You know it's not on our uh, tree is uh, Anchor. Anchor. We are also, uh, you mentioned Snapchat, by the way, which is pretty cool. Yeah. We're on Google Pack, a podcast, Apple Podcast. It's the only place you'll find me on Snapchat. Spotify, on your way, riding home, in between the gym, wherever you want us to be, we're there for you, and it's fun, and it's exciting. Cool. And if you guys have any questions for us, remember, type those questions in. We have our people in the background over here waiting for you to answer those questions, to get them to us so we can answer those questions ourselves. Eric, let's start the show with a little about home improvements in your home, what you should do to get your house ready to sell, and also prepping your home for sale. Very important time. It is now January. The spring market has sprung. The homes are beginning to come on the market, and it's an amazing time of the year where we as realtors get super excited because you guys out there get your houses ready to sell. But before you put them in the house on the market, there may be some things you want to know to do. What yeah, well, just... we've, we, we've compiled a list of things that are not huge cost. This is not something, we're not talking about a complete kitchen remodel. We're not talking about a complete bath remodel. We're not talking about finishing your unfinished basement. Correct. These are small, relatively inexpensive fixes that will make an improvement on what your house is going to look like. It's so important when it comes to selling your house, the preparation that you put in that is worth your time and investment. You know, and some of, the, some of the things we're going to talk about here today, like Eric just said, are not expensive things to do, but super crucial to making your house stand out amongst the rest. Mm -hmm. You want to start with some, my friend? No, you have the, you have the list. I have we the did list. Sure. <laughs> we, we sat together. I gave him an abundance of ideas. He writes them down, and then he, he hoards the paper. All right, so <laughs> let's put this paper right in the middle of here. So one of the most important things you can do and I say this with love, and I mean this with all sincerity in the world. Make sure to have someone walk around your house and look at the fact that maybe it's time to update your painting, your walls, your ceilings. When it comes to painting your house, one of the most important things you need to know is paint your ceilings first. People think that when they paint their house, they, they neglect the ceilings, except that the ceilings are gonna reflect all the light off the walls. And if you don't paint the ceilings first before you paint the walls, it's a disaster. Paint your ceilings first, paint your walls, go with a fresh new color. Maybe it's a nice gray color. Go with a, go with a neutral, you know, just because you like burgundy doesn't mean the next person will. So, that is true. But just if because it's like bourbon possible, doesn't mean everybody else. I'm sorry, what? What were you going to say? You said bourbon? No, burgundy. Burgundy. <laughs> I think bourbon is a color, it's an alcohol. But, um, no, if it's at all possible, do professional. I, I can't tell you how many houses we've seen. You know it was a do-it-yourselfer Not that painted do it. it. And the do-it-yourselfer is so miserable But the fact that they actually decided to take that project on between taping and then getting the paint and then multiple layers of paint because they didn't get a primer in the paint. And then their neck hurts, their arm hurts, their wrist hurts. If you paint it out there, you know painting sucks. Hire somebody. Get somebody who's good. Ask your realtors. We probably have somebody for you that's very good, very reasonable, and make your life less crazy. Next item we recommend doing. Flooring. Flooring is a great point. You have flooring in your house, whether it's carpet, hardwood floors, pergo. Maybe a refinishing your floors is due. You've been living in that house for some time now. Your dogs, your kids, your 
X, oh, Y, Z. Let's cut to the chase. So, I, I've been to houses that have carpet that looks like it belongs in a casino. That's... Okay? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. So, listen, um, it's... It's psychologically, it just turns people off. 100%. And, and the funny thing is they'll see it in the pictures, and I've actually had folks that I've gone through houses with, and they would go, I said, you know, I'm surprised you wanted to see this house, and they said, well, I wanted to see the carpet in person. Right, right. You know? exactly. <laughs> I so, can't believe what I saw there, that carpet was horrendous from 1970s. We just, I just got one. Uh, we just closed on one. Yes. That they, uh, it had a green carpet on it. And um, Luckily they Irish. sent me a picture. They sent me a picture of the new flooring because they put down um, the, the okay. gray laminate. Oh, nice. It looks fantastic. That gray laminate but, is fantastic. But um, the, before, <laughs> the, the before and after pictures are just mind-boggling. You My, see the green carpet and that. Yeah. And by the way, if you have carpet and you want to, let's say, go budget-friendly, put new carpet down. If you got the carpet where it's been sitting there for years and it's got that, like, aged color to it or it's pulling... And it needs to be stretched. Out. Just get new carpet. It's not expensive, and it'll make a huge difference on how your house looks and feels as someone walks in the house. So refinishing floors. Uh, it's. I mean, it's also going to hold the old smells from the house. That's a very that good carpet. Make. Unless you clean that sucker regularly, if you have dogs or if somebody smoked one cigarette once in that house, it's trapped in that carpet. And forget about it. if you have a cat, and I mean that with love, because I'm mean, cat people out there, nothing against it. But cats, if they peed on that carpet. It's a disaster. It's very hard, as you know, to get that smell out. And sometimes what happens is pet owners, dogs, cats, whatever you have, you don't realize the smells that you smell every day because you're so used to it. But people come to your house and they go, oh, this house smells like pets. Mm -hmm. And we're pet lovers. But when it comes to selling your house, we want to make sure the house smells fresh and clean. So carpet replacement, you're finishing your hardwood floors, putting down some pergo, yada, yada, yada. All right. Windows. Now, you probably walk in your house and you look out your windows, but you don't realize how grimy and dirty they are. And I mean that sincerely, because when someone comes in your house, the windows is how it reflects light into your home. You want to make sure your windows are clean. Lift up the windows. Get all that schmeg out of the inside of the window sills. Schmeg? Schmeg. Is that, uh, is that a literal term? It's a schmeg is a schmeg. It's like, you know, it's the, it's the crap. The, it's the leaves, it's the dust, it's the dirt, it's the years of not being clean. It could be the green schmeg from the pollen, right? So, well, I, I mean, you have, let's say you have a house with a view, uh, whether it's a beautiful lush yard or a yes. garden or something like that, and they open the curtains and they look out this bay window and the windows are dirty. Yes. And the screens are just filled with dirt. Schmeg. Is that, is that technically schmeg? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I didn't know it had a name. Now I know. So, yeah, I mean, it just ruins the, uh, it just ruins the impact. It does. You know? And you know what? We have kids. Kids have fingerprints. We have dogs. Dogs have tongues and they get up on top of it. Clean the windows. Make the, make the windows look nice and clean. It makes a difference. You may not notice it, but I promise you the buyers do. Uh, power wash. Power wash your house. Siding. Um, even if you have like a, a wood uh, exterior, um, power wash it, power wash your patio, your walk, your concrete walk, your driveway, whatever. Patios, are, by the way, patio is a very smart thing because it also has the green moss that happens between the patio. And oh, everything. absolutely. Between the, if you have pavers down, sometimes you got those, you know, those creepy moss and exactly. grass that grows up in there. Just make sure you don't power wash the roof. You're taking all the particulate off the roof, and you're aging the roof by probably 10, 15 years by, by taking the particulate off. Yeah, you, and, and, and what Eric's talking about is it's so important. If you own a house with a roof that has maybe some moss on it, do not power wash that roof because, like Eric just said, you may lose 10 years of life on your roof. But if you have that moss on there, what you can do is actually take one part bleach, nine parts water, mix it together, get somebody else to go on the roof, not you because you do not want to fall down, spray the moss on the roof. It'll actually dry it up. It pops off with the rain. Goodbye moss. Great condition roof. So it's like bleaching your hair because it turns it turns uh, orange. Yes. And then white. Yes. And then with the rain, it just washes off. Absolutely. There, there are companies that actually do, uh, do, do it professionally. They have a spray that they spray up there 
and over a couple of months it's completely gone. And it saves the life of your roof, smart one on Eric on the, on the power washing. But power washing makes a big, why would you want to buy a house that you want, you drop it to the house and it's got that green in between the, uh, what's it called? The, uh, the, moss. Yeah, and the siding, it's got that moss yeah, built, it's, it's got gross. moss. Well, and, and for those of you that don't know, the moss is because um, it, get, it's, it gets wet from the rain or snow, whatever. Yes. And that side of the house or that portion of the house is not getting enough sun and it's not dry. I bet and you a lot of people out there had no idea about that. Why yeah. the moss in their house? Or that green schmeg. No, it's green schmeg. Green schmeg. So you have the regular <laughs> schmeg in the... Okay. In the windows and then in the, the windows green and schmeg. The, uh, and the screens and stuff. Okay. So there's green schmeg and green schmeg. <laughs> Let's see how many more times schmeg comes up today. Go ahead. All right. So we have landscaping your property. is another big one here. When it comes to landscaping, there's a lot of little things you could, a lot of little things you can do. Obviously, a fresh cut, like a fresh cut here, a fresh cut in your grass, makes your property looks great. It smells better. It looks better. How about mulch? Refreshing the mulch in your house. Turn it over. Get some new mulch. Get some color. I would recommend black mulch personally when it comes to mulching a house. Black mulch tends to pop the house. It makes it look beautiful. In addition, maybe the landscaper. Maybe you bring in our friend Nick Cavadis from Studio Landscapes, and he does this beautiful design to your Subtle property. Subtle plug. Subtle plug for Nick Cavadis, Studio Landscapes, but he's so amazing. Mm -hmm. He can design your landscaping so reasonably with flowers and all these different kind of things to make it look pretty. My turn? Yes. Declutter. So declutter uh, primarily the basement and the garage. Now the garage is great because I mean, you've, you're using the stuff in the garage, so you've got stuff scattered. You know where it is. Like, the, your garage is a mess, but you know exactly where the extension cords are. Right. Okay? You know exactly where the the pump for the fill up of soccer ball <laughs> yeah. of is. Right? Yes. Um, but it doesn't work for, for, for buyers. Right. So buyers come in, declutter it, have everything. I mean, you don't have to get the pegboard and have everything hanging and labeled and that's everything, actually, but... That's actually a really good idea, the pegboard. Yeah. Just declutter it, because... The garage looks bigger when it's organized Absolutely. to them. It Definitely. looks bigger to the buyer, and the buyer wants a bigger garage. And that's something that they see clutter, they think the garage is not big enough Absolutely. to keep everything I want. If it, your garage looks like this, my garage is going to look like this. A one-car garage is just as important as a two-car garage, and it's more. the less clutter you have, the more space that you said has in it. And there are people who like to work in the garage space. So if you give them a chance to look past all your schmeg clutter in the garage <laughs> three schmegs three schmegs yeah so declutter the garage declutter the unfinished area of your basement yes um just either stuff you know move everything to a corner or whatever because it's just the space i mean if you can't open the door to the section of the unfinished basement yes then you've got problems that's they're right like, true they're thinking i, I you know I have more stuff than these people do. There's no way I'm going to be able to live in this house. You know, you mentioned the basement, and I'm also going to say a couple more things. Closets. You guys have lots of clothes in closets because you keep all the seasonal items in there. So you have your winter, your spring, your fall, your summer, all in your closets. Declutter the closets. Take out the seasons that are not being used at current time when you're selling your house. Put them in some kind of boxes, suitcases. Put them in your attic or in your basement. Get rid of the extra clothes and let your closet look larger. Second thing I'm going to say to you is you want to definitely work on the kitchen countertops. Eric made actually a good point with the kitchen countertops because we were talking earlier and people tend to have appliances on their kitchen countertops that they don't use every day. Right, Eric? Mm -hmm. Some of the items you would consider, what would you take off the countertop? Well, I mean, it's kind of difficult. I mean, you have a coffee maker. You probably use that daily. You have a can opener. You have a microwave. You have actually, a mixer. Well, the right. So, you know, so, but... It, you know, it, it causes them to be concerned. About the space they have in the countertops. You know, A, my microwave is bigger than this one, so it's not going to work. If they have no. a microwave, and hold on, if your house doesn't have a microwave over the oven already. Oh, if it's not mounted, right. Right. So. so the less is more is more important. Less is more is more important that you have the countertops cleaned. Even your coffee maker that you use every day, when it comes to selling your home, take it off the countertops. Let it look completely empty. I don't know if you have a four foot, six foot, eight foot counter space. The more space people see, the more they imagine their things on top of that countertop, making your kitchen look cleaner and better and more saleable. All right, let's go into the next item over there is light fixtures and lighting. 
Now, you know me when I walk into your house, the first thing I say to you is, your lights in this house from room to room look completely different. When you walk in your house and you turn all the lights in your house on, when you walk in the foyer into your family room, are the lights the same colors, the same bulbs? You wanna have the same bulbs throughout the whole house. You should be using LED bright lights because what's gonna happen is, it's gonna feel much more fresh to a buyer walking in the house. You wanna show as much light as possible as people walk into the house and you wanna have the same lighting throughout the whole house. So you're going from, if it's a colonial, for example, you're at your family room, you walk into your dining room, which may walk into your kitchen. Actually, it's probably the living room if you walk in to your dining room, to your kitchen area, to your family room. So you want all the light through the whole house to be the same, whether it's a ranch, a, a, a raised ranch, it's gonna be a cape, it's gonna be a split level house. You want the lighting to be the same. You walk it up the stairs in a colonial, have all the lights in all the bedrooms, if we have lights in the bedrooms, the same, bright white LED bulbs. I promise you it makes a difference in your home. Your realtor's gonna love you, your home is gonna look fantastic, and buyers gonna walk through and say, wow, this is a great place, light and yeah, bright. The only time you should be losing, using 30 watt old bulbs is if you've got something to hide in that yeah, house. You don't want them to see <laughs> yeah. the blemishes and the stains and all that other right. stuff. Right, that's a good point, yeah. I like that a lot. But I mean, if you, if you put the effort into fixing this house up, you want it to show. Absolutely. And, and nothing, nothing's gonna show it better than having just a really bright house. In addition to that, your windows, right? Your windows may have these old curtains, or you know, you think you've spent all this money on these curtains and these drapes. Let me tell you something. There's zero value in resale for those big fachim drapes. And it does not look great on camera. It does not look great in the house. Get yourself those nice, they have for 30 bucks. We Home take Depot them down loves. for photos. We absolutely take them down. We take them down for photos. The kind of ones you pick up with your hand and you pull them back down. You want to keep it simple. You want to keep it easy. These pull string things, you pull it, the thing falls down on top of you. It's a disaster. No good. Yeah, broken um, broken the, blinds yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Get some nice blinds. Spend another 150 bucks. Get blinds for all your windows. It makes a huge difference in how your house is going to look. All right. I'm going to skip over to fireplace because this was my idea. I know I've shown uh, more than a handful of houses. Yes. You walk in, they've got the TV on, they've got it on one of the music stations, they've got soundscapes going on. Yes. And the fireplace is roaring, whether it's gas or it's wood. Yes. And you walk in, the, the first thing you feel is, I'm home. Right. I'm home. People, my folks love those. I mean, it may not, it may not end up being the right house. But that initial feel when you walk in, the scent of the fireplace, the fireplace going, the smell of chili cooking off in the background, I you're like, oh, I want to live here. I'm thinking Christmas immediately when I see a fireplace running because it's like that mm -hmm. whole, you picture the stockings there. Now, obviously, I don't have Christmas in my house, but I emotionally connect to that because when it comes to a fireplace and the stockings picturing there and yep. the family gatherings on the fireplace. you put the, the menorah fireplace. on the mantle? Do you do, have a mantle? We, we do put the menorah up. We don't, have a, we don't have a mantle, but we do have the menorah up. Okay. But the point is that this, 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 the fireplace should definitely be on, cleaned up, looking nice and crisp. And the fireplace has such a, an emotional feel, like you mentioned. It's not just the warmth, it's the glow. Uh, for me, it's probably the single most, um, the single most homey thing in the house. Absolutely. Outside of my bed, that yeah. fireplace <laughs> is, you know. Absolutely. Um, you that know, comes. one more thing. So bathrooms, okay? You go into your bathroom every day. I bet you don't realize, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully every day, maybe three or four times if you're me, okay? You probably don't realize a couple of things that people know, notice when they come to your house but they don't say anything. Make sure your toilets are clean, number one. Your toilets should be really clean, <laughs> and I mean that from the fact that if you lift the seat, or if, you, or if you haven't lifted your seat, you really should lift the seat and see what it looks like when the seat's lifted. Clean the bowl, clean the inside, clean the outside, make sure the bowl is clean. Because when you're going to sell your house, people are going to come over and they may need to use your toilet. You know what's next to the toilet you should probably clean out too? The litter box. If you have a cat... Don't leave a dirty litter box. That's a very good point. In the, in the, in I, the bathroom. Uh, as a matter of fact, you definitely want to maintain pets, their food dishes, their litter boxes, because it carries smells. It carries, And again, you never know the people who come to buy your house. It's important to maintain a clean home. Not that you don't, but sometimes you don't realize what other people are thinking when they're coming to buy your house. So these are some great home improvement ideas. 
things you can do. Low costs. Low cost. Low cost, just a little effort, really. Lots. Just a little, a little bit of effort. Absolutely. All right, we're gonna talk about now a next subject, something that is pretty cool. But now, we're first in a series. First in a series. So, so this series, uh, the first installment of the series is things to do in Connecticut, but we're gonna go over winter. Winter is among us. We are surrounded by the winter time in Connecticut. But we're almost done. It's kind of funny. I don't think we've even started winter yet. Even though it's technically halfway through or almost done, we haven't really received winter yet. It's been chilly. It's been chilly, but we haven't had any snow. No snow. I know. I'm, I'm with you. There's no wood in your head, so stop knocking it. It's but over that's just how we do this. And things. Jonathan's yelling at me because I knocked on it. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to wintertime, right, it's important to know what you can do in Connecticut. Those of you looking to move to Connecticut, those of you living in Connecticut haven't got out much, there's so much to do here in Connecticut during the winter. And let's just go over a few things that you don't know, you should know, and if you have experience, let's talk about it. So the first thing that I pulled up, which was something I've never done before, it's called snowshoeing. Rent snowshoes from the Housatonic River Outfitters and hit the Appalachian Trail and Mohawk State Forest at winding trails in Farmington. You can rent snowshoes, skate skis, and cross country skis. Now I've never done any snowshoeing. Have you done that before? Snowshoeing I've done, but it wasn't recreational. It was a, I did I did it in the in the Marine Corps. So that's pretty cool. I have never done snowshoes. And it wasn't for fun. It was just um, an effort to get from point A to point B without sinking four feet into the snow. Which is interesting. You mentioned because you talked earlier about the fact that you yes. take a snowshoe. I took, yeah, if you take your snowshoe <laughs> off and the you, snow is deep, on, you, you will have, directly go into the snow. But what do you have to pee? What do you do? Um, <laughs> yeah. You wait till you get back to a restroom. <laughs> So the snowshoeing, if you've never done snowshoeing, check it out. It might be something you've never done before, I've never done before. Sounds super exciting, something fun to do, as long as it's not too cold, because I hate when it's super cold, where I can't feel my face, can't feel my fingers, but maybe it's a sunny day, got some snow outside, go and check out the snowshoeing. The Who's Atomic, Who's Atomic River Outfitters, you got Appalachian Trails and Mohawk State Forest, winding trails in Farmington, Eric. What else can we do in Connecticut during the uh, winter time? You're covering this. I'm all right, all right. The next one. Well, the next one is way deep. All right, so take a hike. Let's take a hike. Now, if you like to get out in the cool weather and you like to be dressed appropriately because you're from Connecticut, you've moved to Connecticut, make sure to hit all the right places to get your snow gear. Make sure your hands are covered, your face is covered. Take a hike. Don't let the cold keep you from getting your steps in. Warm up your muscles on any one of Connecticut's hiking trails. Connecticut is known for the hiking trails. Well, they've got a lot of trails. I don't know the, um, the hiking ones. I, I know of one, I think there's one near, um, in Meriden over by that, uh, what's that castle over there? Oh yeah, that is right. There's a castle in Meriden, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's uh, a castle in Meriden that I've heard about. But I, I, could pull, I could pull some hiking trails up if we need to, uh, but I'm gonna lose my space over here. I totally uh, understand. Connecticut's <laughs> top 10 hiking trails, if we're, Matabasa Trail, Central Connecticut. Uh, that's one of the hot ones we're talking about over here. Uh, then we're talking about, uh, you've got Bigelow Hollow State Park in Union. Have you been there before? Union? Yeah. No, it sounds far. Sounds far. Sounds far for me. Sounds pretty far. Mattatuck Trail in Wolkett. Now we do a lot of work in Wolkett. Oh. Wolkett's a great town over there yeah. also. Mattatuck Trail, let's go do some hiking in Mattatuck Trail in Wolkett. Sure. I <laughs> Doubt you're pronouncing that correctly. But I'm yeah. gonna no, he actually is. It's he is. actually okay. yeah. we have the Mine Hill Preserve in Roxbury. Another great place to go and do some hiking. Roxbury. Yeah, Roxbury. Night the Nox Night to Roxbury. One of my favorite movies. In one of the best movies ever. We should sure. we should do it. <laughs> <laughs> we have I don't think these guys know the movie. <laughs> uh they might, they might not. No, they don't. But everybody out there on okay. TikTok, or Instagram, and Facebook know Night the Roxbury. Chris Catan. And uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, help me out. Name. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not and, good at names of actors. My oh wife my could gosh. tell you the name of the actors, I'm sure. We have the Farm River Dude. State Park in East Haven. Did you know East Haven had a state park? The Farm River State Park. East Haven? East Haven. A state park? East Haven. We got a comment on TikTok, uh, also tubing in Woodbury. There you go, tubing in Woodbury. We just lost a little wow. signage over there. The building's <laughs> falling apart. <laughs> Tubing and Woodbury. Who mentioned that, by the way? I want to say thank you so much. Uh, 
Eric Gunther. Eric Gunther on Instagram. Thank you very much, buddy. TikTok. I'm sorry, on TikTok. Awesome, great job there, Eric. Eric wouldn't be quite dead on Instagram. He's on TikTok. Hold on, he's on Tik. Is he really on TikTok? No, he's. That's Instagram. No, it's TikTok. That's TikTok, TikTok. and that's Instagram. Yeah. What that? Come on, Eric, Eric Gunther. From TikTok. Come Love on. it, buddy. That was a great one. Uh, good looking out. We have Troutbrook Valley State Park Reserve in Weston, Connecticut. All right, you're spending way too much way time, too much on, time on, okay. on the hiking. A lot of hiking to do in Connecticut. Let's go back to... Skate. Uh, yeah, hold on a second. Let's talk about that. Ice skating. You been Let's skating? make a date and do some skating. You ever been and ice skating? I haven't done ice skating. I have, you know, as a kid growing up, I grew up in Westbrook. And we had ponds back in the day. And What, there's no more ponds? Well, there's... I don't know. Are there ponds? I have no idea. Yeah, there's still ponds. Okay. They still exist. Going skating on a pond with your friends... Playing a little ice hockey. Make sure that pond is safe, by the way, because that's very important, by the way. Uh, make a date. Make a skate. Do a skate. They have a bundle up and a reserve of time at the International Skating Center of Connecticut in Simsbury. Well, there's a bunch of places to skate. Um, there's both indoor and outdoor, I'm sure. Yes. I like the indoor idea better than the outdoor. Although the indoor can be cold on the it outdoor. It's cold inside. It's very cold. And you Keep think, that. okay, I'm indoors. I don't need a coat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're going to freeze your kazoo for sure. Absolutely. All right. Take down in some down thrills. Park at your skis. Park your ski snowboards and tubes for some downhill fun at Mohawk Mountain Ski Area, Corn in Cornwall, Mount Southington Ski Area in Southington, of course. Ski Sundown in New Hartford and Powder Ridge in Middlefield. So it's shocking enough is that Connecticut has quite a bit of opportunity to ski, and it's not like we're in Vermont or New Hampshire, which are the like places to be in Colorado and Colorado which is like the L and Utah right yeah the skiing places for Mecca Although I skiers. wouldn't know because I've never done skiing recreational skiing really never did you ski like at an, in like when you say recreational do you well ski I did cross-country skiing in the Marine Corps really yeah no Norway kidding. in Norway in Norway yeah that's pretty amazing same place I did the uh, snowshoeing that did you yeah. see the uh what's it called the uh, northern lights yes wow that's something you have to get pictures of that at all? My, we actually we didn't have phones back then. It was it was yeah. it was mid eighties. The mid eighties they didn't have uh, cell phones cell were phone. a twinkle yeah. in somebody's eye in the mid eighties. Those are back that's when we used the cameras that you took a picture and it would be like uh what was it called? Those uh Oh no Instant click, cameras. Click, 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 click. Yeah, Polaroids, exactly right. Yeah, yeah Polaroids. Polaroids or the instant the little disposable cameras. Disposable cameras. Yeah. Wanna hear a quick funny story about disposable cameras? So, no, I don't, but go ahead. All right. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Tell it anyway. So we're at a, my son, he might be four, five, six years old, and we go to a wedding and on the counters they have at the time I've seen those yeah. the disposable cameras where you take mm -hmm. your pictures. Now and you put them in at the end of the night. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he at that time, at that time period of his life, we took a picture of the camera, and the picture was in the back of the phone, and you could. I'm sorry, the phone. <laughs> back of the camera, and you could actually see the picture. Mm -hmm. And he was so confused because he'd never seen disposable cameras before, and he's like, Where, "Where's the picture? I can't see it." And that just made me think about that. All right, so uh, let's talk about uh, stride country, stride cross country. Swap downhill the runs for a peaceful glide through nature Strange. when cross-country skiing at James Goodwin State Forest in Hampton, in Hampton, in White Memorial Conservative Center Museum in Litchfield. Center. Conservation Center and Museum uh, in Litchfield. Litchfield. Well, they get some snow up there. They definitely get some snow. As That's a matter of fact, they... Upper left-hand corner of Connecticut, they yeah, get some snow Yeah, it's funny. When they show the maps on the news, I always see that. That's where it kind of snows first. Yes. Well, and let's first, keep it. first and worst. And let's 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 yeah. keep it. Let's keep it's it. It's like there. we get three inches, they get twelve. <laughs> yeah, seriously. You know? like, oh my goodness. All right. And by the way, something you definitely want to look into. So do is, the break the ice because that one's really. I agree no with idea. you. Break the ice. Visit a local bait shop before cutting the ice fish for bass, pike, and perch. This is something Danny and I got to do one day. Danny loves a fish. All right. So at the Bantam Lake or Lake Waramog. Waramog. You might even stop by Cabela's for some extra gear. What an amazing thing to do here in Connecticut, go ice fishing. Yeah. That you're definitely something. going to Cabela's first. You're getting some warm, some warm gear. 100%. You're getting some fishing material, fishing stuff. My question is, I mean, a bass to me is a huge fish, right? Isn't a bass a big fish? Well, they vary, but yes. So how big is this hole you're cutting in the ice? Before, I mean, it's got to be somewhat. How do you, you know, pull the fish out of that? Um, it's got to be yeah, the size it's about of about a foot in diameter. Wow. Yeah. Uh, interesting. 
never been ice fishing, if you've been out there ice fishing, I'd love to hear from you as well. Um, and let's, one thing to be very excited, I've never done before today, a lot of people have done this. Have you ever done axe throwing? I've always wanted to do it. Eric, have you done this before? I have not. Never done axe throwing. I did recommend it to you, you did. two years ago. Yes, you did. As a matter of fact, what we're gonna do, we're gonna hit up the axe throwing event one time, Eric and I. We'll do a little videotaping of how we do, get some uh, for the podcast, and we'll do a little podcast on, on the axe throwing. But axe throwing can be done at the Pine and Arrow axe throwing in Hartford, and also the Blue Ox axe throwing in Bridgeport. Well, there's also a Blue Ox in Wallingford. Oh, there's Blue Ox in Wallingford yes. too. That's yep. maybe I wonder if there's such a company. That's such the one that, uh, that I initially told you about. Okay, we'll have to check that out. So axe throwing in Wallingford, Bridgeport, Hartford, and there may be other places you guys know about out there. Tell us all about it. Uh, what else, Eric? So um, obviously I'm not going to go item by item by item because we're running short on time here. But uh, real quickly, Connecticut does have a lot of art and culture. Lots I mean, of you've culture. Got, you've got uh, specific pockets of Connecticut that have. A lot of art, a new, the new London area. Um, so basically, ctvisit.com. Uh, you can itemize um, some of the uh, some of the places and activities that we're talking about. Um, but there's great museums out there for art. Um, not so much natural history. That's probably New York. Um, a lot of concert venues for you to go to in Connecticut. Um, Indoor activities. Just, uh, Mostly indoor. Well, it's winter, so yes. you did the outdoor stuff. Yes. I got the indoor stuff. Indoor. Yeah. So we got a comment from Nick Emberling. Uh, Mike tossing and Staven. I don't know what that is. Uh, Nick Emberling. What's up in Staven over there? Uh, <laughs> what tossing? <laughs> She's through the Staven. It's for East Haven. It's Staven. Oh, Staven. Uh, Nick Emberling. By the way, Nick Emberling and his wife Tammy. Wonderful family. I'm very excited this year. We are going to be cabana mates at the beautiful Silver Sands Beach Club. I cannot wait to have a good time with these guys. An amazing family that will make you laugh from cheek to cheek. Thank you for watching, guys. Yeah, there's, other... also, there's also some famous homes in Connecticut. Um, not Dave's, but yeah, uh, <laughs> Mark Twain, Harry Beecher Stowe. There's a lot of them. Just go to ctvisit.com. Uh, You'll see some some nice uh, sights to see up there. Guys, we are having an amazing show today. We hope you enjoyed what we're talking about. Connecticut has so much to offer you this winter. Make sure to check out the scenes, things you've never done before, things I've never done before, things you haven't done before. And I think that axe throwing is definitely going to be on our agenda. You and me are going axe throwing. Let's have some fun, buddy. In the meantime, we hope you enjoyed the ideas of the home improvements and things to do and prepping your home. These are things that are critical. Uh, guys, we promise what we're talking about is influential on your buyers. It's emotional, it's physical, and it's not very financial. It'll create an ability to sell your house, not only for more money, faster, it also makes it look better on camera, mm -hmm. right? I mean, let's get the people that wanna come into your house, let's get you top dollar for those homes, you deserve it, you've lived these homes, you've been taking care of them, hopefully, and it's time to get them ready for sale. So what do we have next week? As a matter of fact, next week we have a very important show. And the show that we're going to have is with Jane Doe No More. Uh, it's a very, very serious show. You want to stay tuned for the show next week. You're not going to want to miss it. It's real life, real situations. Jane Doe No More was in 60 Minutes, reached out to us to ask him on our show, and we were blown away by the opportunity to have them on the show here. So next week, Jane Doe No More, an amazing show. We cannot wait to have you a part of that show. And now we're going to the next part of our show where we give out a free tumbler to you guys for being a part of our special day. Please also know if you want to be a part of a tumbler giveaway, you need to let us know on TikTok, a hand raise, write in the word tumbler, Instagram, Facebook. Guys, we love giving it away. We enjoy the opportunity to work for you also in the future and build that relationship with you. Eric Vasquez, David Lamel, and we have a team, by the way, of 14 agents now and growing. There was 15, no? We have one more agent we just signed. It's going to be spotlighted and piloted in about a week and a half, two weeks. Very excited. And by the way, we have to get these agents on the show because we have some amazing new people. Uh, we have Shan Shannon. We have Alexia. Interesting we people. Right? Yep. We have, uh, let's see, Shannon, Alexia, who just joined us. We have, who else, Eric? Help me out. Don't put the pressure on me Clara. all of a sudden. 
What? Clara. Clara. We have... Uh, dum -bum -bum. I don't know. You haven't shared the other ones. Oh, my goodness. We have, and please forgive me because there's so many agents on our team. Our team is growing. And let me tell you something. If you're looking to join a team, if you're not happy with where you are, if you're not making the right money, you think you deserve better, I promise you, you'll have an experience that you've never forgot. Forget an experience. This team is something very special. We love to teach, coach, and introduce you to the opportunity to make a lot of money and have some fun doing it. All right, Jonathan, let's get back into the Wheel of Fortune for the Tumblr giveaway. And who's going to be our lucky winner today? Because we can't see. I can see. I just can't see the wheel. Seelan, <laughs> um, S-E-L-I-M from Instagram. Okay. You have to say that a little slower and louder. S-E-L-I-M from Instagram. Selim. Selim from Instagram. Thank you so much for being a part of our show. We'd love to give this one to you. Please reach out to us. Make sure we have your contact information so we can get this out to you ASAP. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, please and thank you so much for joining us every week. We enjoy being a part of your lives. We appreciate your friendship, your love, and your support. Go to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe, Spotify, and everywhere else you want to be with us. And of course, you get the replan Saturday where all this comes together a little bit more crisp, a little more clear, and just watch us and listen to us on the road. Thank you, everybody. Eric Vasquez. Schmutz. Schmutz. <laughs> Schmeg. 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 <laughs> same, same thing. This was Yiddish. a Yiddish. A little Schmeg, a little Schmutz. Schmutz. We welcome you guys Schmeg. every week. <laughs> Schmeckle. Schmeckle, yes. We will see you every week. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night, everybody.